Everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So new photos and details have emerged about a trip that Jeffrey Epstein took to Disney World. I know that sounds kind of random and benign, but you're going to see why this is beyond disturbing. So here's the deal. Apparently, sometime around 2004, Epstein took a group of approximately 10 people to Disney World in Orlando, Florida. That's something that an inside source has told the Daily Mail, and they provided proof of this trip with the images. The group consisted of women who have been named as Epstein victims, as well as co-conspirators. Some of the names that they mentioned were Ghislaine Maxwell, Sarah Kellen, Nadia Marchinkova. They were all three allegedly on this trip. The group was given the VIP treatment, according to the source. They um, said that they were escorted throughout the park with a private tour guide. They skipped all the lines. They were given preferential treatment throughout the entire visit. And they also met two men at the park. And the source identified these men only as friends of Epstein. So that's incredibly creepy, given the company that he typically kept. So most of the photos provided to the Daily Mail show Epstein and others sitting around a dining room table at a Disney World restaurant. And if you want to see the photos, you can go to the Daily Mail and they have them all posted there. The photos do show two men in the presence of Epstein sitting at this table and they are not with a family. They are not with children. However, visible in several of the photos as well is one little girl who's sitting on a man's lap and she's seated on this man's lap next to Epstein. So this appears to be her parent or guardian. And all around them, there are children with unsuspecting families just seated at all of the surrounding tables. I mean, little do these people know that they're seated within feet of pure evil. Someone who, given the opportunity, would violate their child without a single moment of remorse or guilt. It's truly disturbing. However, the photo that really sent a chill up my spine and what has caught everyone's attention on this was taken on Epstein's private jet. So in the photo, you see Epstein, he's relaxing and kind of leaning back in a leather chair, and he's looking down at the face of the young girl who had fallen asleep on his lap. Now, although there's no indication or evidence or reason to believe at this time that this little girl was victimized by Epstein, it just serves as a reminder of how Epstein was so able to easily fool so many people. It just reminds us how easy it was for him to weasel his way into people's lives and get that close to little girls without their parents suspecting any wrongdoing. It's a wake-up call, or it should be a wake-up call to all parents. You know, that we need to be vigilant, that without becoming paranoid, without allowing it to make us go out of our minds, we need to adopt a healthy suspicion of all adults who we allow to have access to our children. So I should note too that the name of the child has not been revealed and her face was blurred in the photos. Likewise, all of the men seated at the table with Epstein as well as the surrounding Disney guests have all been blurred and their identities are unknown. I'll let you know if any more details surface about this. I would imagine that someone will come forward and reveal who these people are, especially these creepy men who for some reason decided to go to Disney World without a family or without any children to meet up with their buddy. You know, even though he hadn't been prosecuted, I mean, I can say that this was at least several years before the prosecution came, before he spent time on work release, uh, you can't even say in prison really, for those 13 months. But the talk was out there. It was kind of a known secret. And you don't question why this guy is traveling with young girls all over the place. It doesn't raise any flags 
Or do guys just go like, oh, good for him. He's lucky. I mean, what is that? Seriously, we got to get rid of this bro culture. If they're not willing to step up and say something, they're as guilty as the perpetrator in my mind. If you know or you suspect something is going on and you say nothing, you are pretty much as guilty as the person who's doing it. And, and I'm not directing that towards children because, of course, children who were being victimized knew what was going on. It's not on them. They're children. Their brains don't even finish completely developing until they're like 22 years old. So they can't predict the consequences of their actions until after they're close to their mid-20s. They don't understand really what's going on until they become older. So it's not on them. It's on the so-called adults in the room to step up and do the right thing. All right, guys, as always, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care, and I'll talk with you soon.